Hello friends. In this session, we'll be mainly focusing on the human visual system. We all know that image is to be seen. Talking about the perceptual based image processing, it mainly focuses on perceptually significant information and it discards perceptually insignificant information. The issues related to it are biological issues and psychophysical issues. Now talking about the human eye. The human eye basically is constructed of many different things. We will be talking about different parts in details. Now the first thing that we have here is the cornea. So talking about cornea, they are basically clear lens in front of an eye. They are transparent covering of the front of the eye and it allows for the passage of light into the eye and functions as a fixed lens. So here we need to focus mainly on the function of cornea that is it allows for the passage of light into the eye and it also focuses the light. The next thing that we'll be talking about is pupil. Pupils are basically the black holes, black holes in iris where exactly the light enters and always the pupil size is controlled by iris muscles. Now the next part that we have is iris. Iris is the colored part of the eye and it controls the light entering. The iris is a colored circular muscle. So mainly the function of iris is to control the amount of light which is entering the eye. The next part that we have is sclerera. So basically talking about sclera, a tough white skin, it is made of tissue that covers all of the eyeball except the cornea. The sclera is the white part of the eye which supports the eyeball and it also provides an attachment for the muscles. The next part that we have is nothing but the lens, lens of an eye. So lens are mainly behind the pupil. They are converging lens allows which allows us to see objects near and far. The next part that we have is retina. Now talking about retina is it is known as the internal membrane of the eye. It contains light receptive cells, rods and cones. It converts the light to electrical signal. The next thing that we have is the optic nerve of an eye. The optic nerve transmits the electrical impulses from retina to the brain and it also creates blind spot. Sorry, blind spot. Now talking about what exactly a blind spot is. The blind spot on retina where optic nerve leads back into the brain. No rod here, basically no rod or cone cell. Other eye compensates for this area too. So that's all about the human eye. These are the different parts which has a major role to play when any kind of a light enters into the eye. So that's all about the human eye. So basically what can be said is, light passes through the cornea, iris, lens and form image on retina. There are basically two types of photoreceptors on retina. We can say that there is a phototopic vision and also a scotopic vision. Talking about the photopic vision, there are cones which cluster at fovea, they detect color at bright light. Whereas talking about scotopic vision, there are rods which spread at back of eye, which is general vision. So here you can see this is basically a graph of the distribution of rods and cones in the retina. The solid line you can see here are the cones and the dotted line that you can see are the rods. This is the blind spot which is shown in the picture. 
Now what exactly happens when a human eye is looking at a palm tree? You can see in the figure that there is a palm tree of height 15 meter which is at a distance of 100 meter from the human eye. The point C here is nothing but the optical center of the lens and the image formed is at 17 millimeter from the point C. So basically it can be said that whenever an object is 3 meter or more away the focal length is 17 millimeter with lowest refractive power. So basically what I can say is the image length here H is equal to 17 millimeter into 15 which is the height of the palm tree divided by 100 which is the distance from the palm tree. Now visual psychophysics. Now model vision system as an input output system. Here mainly the input is visual stimuli and the output is always prescribed sensation. Visual psychophysics basically characterize the response of human visual system to different stimuli. We'll be learning about brightness adaptation and spatial threshold vision. Under spatial threshold vision, we'll be studying what are Weber ratio, visual masking and Mac effect. Now talking about brightness adaptation. The human visual system can view a large intensity range which is mainly of the range 10 raised to 10. But simultaneous perceived intensity range is much smaller as compared to the normal intensity range. So here you can see in the graph we have log of intensity versus subjective brightness ranging from scotopic threshold to glare limit. Now from the graph we can see that if a person is at point BA which is an intensity which is something outside the theatre and when the same person walks into a dark theatre he can only distinguish up to this point that is BP and for the same person it will take much longer for the eye to adopt for the scotopic vision to pick up. So that's all you can conclude from the brightness adaptation. The next thing that we have is Weber ratio. Human visual systems sensitivity to intensity difference differ at different background intensity. We will be learning about this thing in the further slide. So basically what exactly is Weber ratio? Weber ratio is nothing but delta i upon i. That is where i is the intensity and delta i is the difference of intensity just noticeable intensity difference versus background intensity. It is a function of log i. So now talking about simultaneous contrast. As you can see here, we have the same image with three different backgrounds. The first image is a darker background. The second one is comparatively lighter and the third one is comparatively much lighter. So basically here the perceived in brightness of inner circle are different due to different background intensity levels even if the circle is identical in all three pictures. So that's all about simultaneous contrast. The next thing that we have is Mac band effect. Now talking about Mac band effect, you can see here there are different shades of grey. So what exactly happens in Mac band effect is there, are, there is perceived brightness which changes around strong edges. So as you can see here, this is the actual illumination and the perceived brightness changes at the strong edges. As you can see here, initially we have a darker shade and as the strong edges keep on occurring, the shade becomes comparatively lighter. So this is nothing but MAC band effect. So that's all about Mag Band Effect. Thank you.